Welcome to the Cheetah Medical Starling SV version 5.5 training module number one. In this module, we will cover an introduction to using the software and also how to perform a passive leg raise. At the end of the module, a website address will be displayed where a brief online evaluation of the topics covered in this video can be filled out. Let's get started. How to start a new session. Press and hold the power button on the upper right corner of the monitor to turn it on. Press the Start a New Session button to begin. To search or add a new patient, use the on-screen keyboard to enter the patient ID, which is usually the patient medical record number. If the patient ID is already in the system, choose the Select option next to the ID session information. If the patient ID is not in the system, choose Add New Patient. Now we'll enter the patient details. Touch each box to enter patient ID, height, weight, age, and gender. Be sure to select the correct unit and measurement for height and weight. Touch the button in between the units to toggle. Once finished, select Start New Session. How to correctly place the Cheetah sensors. The sensors can be placed anywhere on the chest or back as long as two are positioned above and below the heart. All four sensors do not have to be on the front. One can be on the front and three on the back, or two on the front and two on the back, as long as you have two above the heart and two below, and they are in their assigned quadrant. Ensure that each sensor is in the upright position. The white tab must point to the patient's toes. The picture and red mark on each sensor indicate the correct location for sensor placement on the anterior torso. The upper sensors can be placed to straddle the clavicle. Do not place the sensor directly on the clavicle. The upper sensors can be placed to straddle the trapezius, with the white tab pointing to the front. Alternatively, the upper sensors can be placed on the upper back with the white tab pointing to the toe. Be sure to place at least two and a half to three inches from pacemakers or simply put the sensor on the patient's upper back. The lower sensors should be placed below the rib cage, on flank, or on the patient's back. Do not place in skin folds. For patients with respiratory distress, place sensors on the back. For obese patients, the optimal spot for the lower sensors are on their flank or back. When placing sensors on the back, first orient the sensors using the red tabs on the front of the patient and then place the sensors in the same location on the back. Here are some tips to ensure sensor adherence. Clip or shave hair if necessary. Wipe skin with skin abrasive paper. Do not place the sensors on hair. Skin should be clean and dry. Place transparent dressing over each sensor if diaphoretic. Replace sensors every 48 hours. The sensors may be left on for x-rays and CTs but must be removed before an MRI. Now let's check the sensors on the Starling SV monitor. The sensors on the blue torso will be flashing red before they are connected to the cable. After the sensors are connected and an adequate signal is received, they will turn green. The Start Session button will become active once the automated phase calibration is complete. Select Start Session to continue. If the Start Session button is not pressed, and the sensors are green, the session will automatically start in 20 seconds and enter into the patient learning phase. The Starling SV software will now collect learning information about the patient for about 90 seconds. During this time, a notification will appear. After completion, the notification will disappear. To recalibrate the monitor, navigate to the main menu, select Session Controls, then select Recalibrate. Manual recalibration needs to take place once every 12-hour shift and any time the sensors are moved or changed. Let's take a tour of the basic screen display. This is the main menu navigation button. The Home button resets the current view to the default display that was chosen by your hospital. This button will open additional screen views. Use this button to maximize or minimize the screen. This arrow expands the lower screen. For help, press this info button to open the help menu. 
The dashboard view can be customized and show more data, but one touch on the Home button will return to the default view. On the dashboard view, the monitor is able to display up to four quadrants of data simultaneously. Hemodynamic profile, trends, clinical range, waveforms, dynamic assessment, and numeric. Each of these views can be enlarged to cover the entire display. Tap the Maximize Minimize button to enter full screen view. Tap the Collapse button to return to the dashboard view. To split the bottom quadrant into two views, touch the arrow on the left and select any of the bottom tabs. You can customize the hemodynamic profile. To add or change different hemodynamic parameters, touch the plus symbol and a list of parameters will be displayed. Select the parameter you want to add and touch the plus symbol again. To add the map to calculate TPR, TPRI, touch TPR, TPRI and then select Enter Map. Use the keypad to enter map, then select OK to calculate. To change the order of a parameter, press and hold the parameter label and move it up or down to the desired location. Several preset screen views can be accessed by pressing the Dashboard Views button. The home icon will always make the display revert to the default view, even after customization that session. The main menu can be accessed through the three lines in the upper left corner. This is where you will find the recalibrate option. Here is also where you will find the shutdown command to power off the monitor. Now let's walk through how to perform a passive leg raise using the Cheetah Starling SV 5.5 software. First, select Start PLR from the Dynamic Assessment Dashboard. This view is one of the preset main home screens and factory default view. Your hospital may have chosen a different default view and display parameters. The Start PLR and Start Bolus buttons will always be visible from the home screen. If a message appears that says, a stable baseline has been established, do you want to proceed directly to the PLR? It is asking, can the last three minutes of SVI data be used for the baseline? In other words, with no nursing interventions. Selecting yes will prompt you to proceed directly to step two of the PLR. Selecting no will allow you to run a three minute baseline. The three minute baseline will first instruct you how to properly position the patient. After properly positioning, select next. You will now be shown a diagram of how the patient should be positioned for the PLR baseline stage. When the patient is positioned accordingly, select next to run the three minute baseline. A three minute countdown timer is shown in the protocol portion of the dashboard view. Once a PLR baseline is complete, a pop-up will instruct the user to change the patient position. After the patient is positioned correctly, select Next. The user may end the PLR dynamic assessment as soon as the patient is shown to be fluid responsive. If the patient's SVI increases to 10% or more, you may select End PLR. End PLR text will turn from red to black once the patient is shown to be fluid responsive. The dynamic assessment report will then be displayed on the screen. If you had ended the PLR as soon as the patient was fluid responsive, the pop-up will then display Dynamic Assessment Ended by User. To enlarge the full report, use the corner arrow. To minimize the report, click the arrow again. Previous dynamic assessments will now appear to the left of the current dynamic assessment report. If a PLR challenge is ended before three minutes have elapsed, and when the SVI is less than 10%, an error message will warn the user. The end PLR text on the button will also turn red. Selecting yes will end the PLR challenge and yield no results. Selecting no will take you to the PLR challenge phase without interruption. The clock will continue to count down even if this warning appears. This completes the Cheetah Medical Starling SV version 5.5 training module number one. Please visit this website address to complete a brief online evaluation of the topics covered in this video.